What's going on, guys? KG here from the Football Capital. And yes, the grand final is over. We're about to do the review of the grand final. Western United 2, Melbourne City 0. The champions have been crowned. And today I've got Lockie and Borcher both on the channel. And we're ready to do a review of the grand final. First of all, boys, welcome. Um, and how, how much did we enjoy that grand final? Mate, it was... So much fun, man. It was it was honestly a lot of fun. It was a really intriguing battle. And uh, yeah, congratulations to Western United. Yeah, yeah, 100%. 100%. It was uh, definitely a good game, good game to watch. And um, maybe we, not everyone expected that result, but hey, let's see. You got to turn up on the day and get the result. Yeah, Borch, I know that we covered it um, on the last episode in terms of the preview and, and it wasn't quite going to be as clear cut as we thought it would be. And you know what? Surpri surprisingly, for me anyway, <clears throat> um, he's proved me wrong. Uh, John Aloisi, you know, from from our early predictions at the start of the year, uh, I can say nothing other than congratulations to him and Western United and the team. Um, it was a uh, it was a great performance, uh, I think. You know, from from Western United, probably the most complete performance of the year. Um, they had a really exciting semi-final, but this was a performance uh, that made a great grand final. And I think um, more than anything, probably exposed Melbourne City a little bit, um, in, in my opinion. I just thought uh, Western United all in all were relentless. We'll go into the chances and we'll go into the goals. But I just thought um, it was a dominant display worthy of grand final winners. Uh, if, we would, if we would look at the game, I mean... Very early on, boys, two minutes into the game, minute 45, I think it was. Um, they used the advantage of, of Priovic, the big man in the box. I know he didn't get credited with the goal, but four defenders try to get to that ball, um, and he caused enough for them um, to obviously put the ball into the back of their own net. Um, it was just a really work, a really well-worked set piece, even though it wasn't credited to Western United striker. Yeah, absolutely. And like, I think we should say as well, like credit to Previch for getting up there, but like the corner delivery, I think it was Ben Garuccio's left foot with the, the delivery. I mean, that that's the danger when you whip it into an area like that, that it's always going to flick off someone's head, whether it's an attacker or a defender. And I loved, like as a neutral watching this game, I loved that we got that early goal because it just made it, 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 it just, you know, it opens it up. We've seen grand finals in the past. I think back to that Perth Sydney grand final where it's just, it's just nil all. It's like no one's really like everyone's being super cautious. Yeah. This was exciting because it, it shook up the game. And, you know, we all knew that Melbourne City were going to attack this game, but this really put them on the back foot early. And it was, and it was quite interesting to see how it played out from there. So, yeah, man, the, the goal really made it exciting uh, from, yeah, the second minute. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. It was and it, it was good that sure. it was good that it was Western United that got the first goal. Because if it was mm. Melbourne City, you're, you're almost like, ah. Oh, it's kind of over. You probably already get that feeling, but it'll be interesting to see what what the message was for Melbourne City going out there. Like I, I know Kiz Noble would have been in there and give him that that talk that he did last season and pretty much all season as well. This is why they're you know back to back minor premiers and this is you know grand finalists last season and made it made it again this season. But you know two minutes in. You, especially in this type of game, you need to stay focused. No matter if it's a corner, if it's if goal kick, the throw in, you got to, especially that early in the game. And that kind of, that kind of set Western United up. Now it's pretty much all right. Show us what you got, because we've defended all season as good as we can. Well, are they? What are they? First or second best defensive record? I know for a long time, for a long period of the season, they were up there. Of, like the what the first five games or something, no, not a goal conceded. Yes, they're winning the one nils, but at the end of the day, it it is the three points. And um, yeah, that early goal really set the tempo of the game. Priovic showed his presence. The Serbian Ibrahimovic got up there, and he went in the back of the net. And hey, doesn't matter how it goes in, it goes in. Huh? counts. They all count. I mean, I mean that's it, right? Um, and you're right, uh, Borcher, in, in regards to it was it was Western United that got the first one um, because de definitely a totally different game if if City got it um, if City got it first. And you just you just look and it's set and and Lockie's right as well. It it livened the game up. It wasn't cagey. 
Um, but what I will say is that they got the first, and and normally, you, I mean, I don't know, but if you wanted to defend the game, you could defend it. But Western United just kept going. They just they were that first half, at least that first twenty five minutes, half an hour, they just kept going at them. So I don't know if the message was, hey, you know, we're not sitting back. We're going to keep coming at you. Um, and Garuccio and and uh, Risden, they did an amazing job on that left and right back to to nullify literally what was a long ball that just kept coming. Um, mm. You you could even see there was a moment I can't remember exactly uh, when it was in the first half, but I believe Griff, Rustin Griffiths got the ball, and before he's even played the ball, Garuccio has turned and he's just started running. He started chasing. Um, Nabu, and when the ball came through, it was like, "Man, I'm already in position. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna clean this up." And even Risden, who picked up the knock very early on in the game, he he ends up playing the whole grand final like a true captain. Um, but he he really silenced Lecky. Um, yeah, on that was a good. That was a good side. battle as well. Mm. That Lecky Risden yeah, like, battle. Yeah, and and I thought I thought obviously they'd done their homework and and. That's what I'm saying. They probably exposed Melbourne City a little bit more than we probably expected, where they knew that the two danger men were, you know, um, Lecky and Nabu out wide. And obviously McLaren, you, you, you can't discount. But they had a game plan on how to handle that. And even once they got the ball, they weren't pumping it long, Western United. They were very adamant about playing it out from the back. Yeah, and I'm, I'm glad you brought up that, that, uh, that, that tactical sort of... Uh... Uh, a thing there, that part of the game, how the, the Western's fullbacks were really just shutting down that 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 ball over the top. Because I I, no, I picked up that during the the semi final against Adelaide that they were just exploiting City, we were just exploiting the space down the wings there, getting in behind the fullbacks. And Garuch, credit to Garuccio and Risden who have had a fantastic season. And and yeah, that 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 I was one of the there was one of the uh, more interesting storylines from this grand final for me that that injury to Risden. I think he went down like within like ten minutes or, or something yeah. like that. It was it was early on. And I thought, and, and I think he went down a couple times and I was like, he's done. This is a blow. And it was a blow too, because they didn't like they, they're without top of Stanley who would sort of be their, their main defensive replacement to come on. So they didn't necessarily have like a, like a, you know, a decent replacement ready to go. Um, so it was an absolutely like massive shift for him to like continue out the game. And, and, and by the end, like he didn't look like he was, he was injured. He was having a good tussle with Scotty Jamison at times as well. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, but, but that was really like, like honestly, and that's, that's the spirit that West United have shown many times throughout this season. Like they don't necessarily have like the big star names. Like they do have some star players, but they're a team that have, have, you know, the success of this season has been built off not the star, you know, the big players of like a couple individual players, like one big name player. It's, absolutely a team performance and that's what we can say about you know them this season and them so much in this grand final it was a team performance in defense they were you know near perfect and in attack as you mentioned there uh, kg like they were getting forward they were the better team in that first half especially for sure yeah yeah 100 percent, kev we spoke about it in the preview to it we said for for melbourne city it's the individual players yes they're a, they're great as a team but it was going to be the moments from jamie mclaren lecky um, Tillier, w- w- when he eventually came on, um, Nabu as well. It was going to be moments from them players. And it was going to take a team effort from Western United to get over the line. And like Lucky just said, he's, he's exactly spot on there. Um, it, was, it was funny, like, watching, watching the Champions League the next day or the next morning, very similar to how, they, how both games kind of went. Um, you talk about the formations and ha- how they set up. Western United didn't play that high line a lot of the time because they're not, they, they didn't want to let, like your Nabu's, your Leckies, Jamie McLaren's uh, at the back and over the top. And um, to, because if you get in a foot race with them, especially Risden, already having a little bit of a knock injury, yeah, it, they, you know, they, there would have been a bit of damage. But look, they kept, they kept them out for that whole, for that whole, um, the whole second half. And yeah, and, Look, you're going into the second half there, and it's it's Melbourne, Vic, uh, Melbourne, Melbourne City come at us, and even like even you look at it, like you look at the stats, and it just Melbourne, uh, Western United had that one shot on target, one shot, and yeah. they got two goals. Do you know what I'm saying? Uh, but then them getting well, well, that, that them getting that goal. Oh, it was even just before the when was the first goal? It was, 
the, the first goal was oh, the sec- second minute yeah, and then followed, I think, 20-odd minutes. Yeah, yeah, mark, into the thing. Mark. Yeah. Bit of, bit, of, um, um, bit of debate whether it was or wasn't. VAR steps in and... Hey, by a nose. By a nose, it. apparently. Prejevich kept saying on the screen, by a nose. <laughs> yeah, by a nose. Um, but, but, that's a, but that's a true striker's goal, right? Yeah. Like, you're on your last man... You play, you play your chance, like you got to take the chance, right? And he punished that ball. Like I've seen him score a similar goal against the Wanderers where I reckon Margush shat himself when the ball was coming at him. And this was one of those ones very similar, um, you know, top, Glover wasn't going to, wasn't going to save it, but it was natural instinct by a striker onside or offside. I'm punishing this ball, I'm putting it in the back of the net, deal with it later. And, and, you know, Connor Payne, I think came off his face, possibly. I can't remember. I think back uh, off Connor his knee. For the, was it back off his knee? Maybe. I, I remember maybe. it was a deflection. Sorry, yeah. And, you know, by mistake. But, hey, he's onside, puts a ball in the back of the net. They go offside, VAR looks, and all of a sudden, half an hour in, 2-0. Yeah, and th- Mate, that's that, that's that shock that result. That's that sho- hey, look, <laughs> that's that shock result. And, and it, then he became a more of a mountain to climb for Melbourne City. And you're like the creativity in the midfield wasn't really there. It's like they were running out of ideas. Not only that, it was there was a lot of panic. It's like we need to get the goal now. Instead of, all right, look, we can get two goals in, in five minutes. It's no big deal. We've done it before. Mm. You know, we've, it's not the first time that they've gone behind and, and then they've come back to even draw or win the game. And it, it was just that for Melbourne City where I felt the whole season... The whole, even last season, the, the Champions League that they've played, it all kind of drained, drained them out, and it happened to be on Grand Final Day. And you can see some of the, you can see some of the warning signs against Adelaide the week before. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't a walkover over there as well against Adelaide. I mean, Adelaide put it to the sore if they, if it wasn't for that bit of deflection for Jamie McLaren to get that goal, we could be, we could be sitting here saying Western United, Adelaide United Grand Final. So. I don't know. There was yep. something missing for mm. uh, Melbourne City. There was something missing yeah. that that spark. I, uh, it was hard to put a finger on, but and it's like, go on. Yeah, no, I, I was just going to mention that, Borsh. You mentioned the panic that Melbourne City had, and there, and there was a moment in the game for me. It was sixty six minute. <laughs> They brought off Roston Griffiths for Marco Tilio. Yeah. And I remember like seeing the comments on social media, all the City fans like, we need Marco Tilio on, we need Tilio on. And they brought him on, but I didn't agree with the substitution of being Roston Griffiths off. Because, I mean, not only was Griffiths, I think, having a pretty solid game in, in defensive midfield, and he's and he's a really good defensive midfielder too, but it meant that Connor Metcalf, who I think is really good going forward, had to shift back as that defensive midfielder. Yeah. And they, I think they brought Leckie in to sort of play like alongside McLaren. It just, it, it you know... As, as you mentioned, they, they didn't need to panic. I thought the goals were going to come for them eventually. Yep. And for me, that's sort of... I, I don't like disrupting the system too much. I mean, look at Western United. They've barely changed their system at all this season. They they play mm. a pretty consistent lineup. And, 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 and City, I thought that was a pretty interesting move, Roston Griffiths. You, you want to keep your enforcer on. You know, if you're going to bring someone off, like even bring... I don't know Flor- Florent Beringer is a fantastic player, but maybe shift him off or or if the boots not having a great game maybe i mean he was, he was not that he was performing poorly but i just i just didn't yeah. agree with that substitution and during that time too it was it was just a bizarre one and i, and I thought let melbourne city down especially a, a talented player like conor metcalf yeah. who's now heading overseas to germany um it was a bit of a bizarre one and i think but, but lucky like, lucky do you reckon yeah. uh, with with the graphic that came up at, at the start of the game for the formation and I know mm. USA never believed the graphics at the start of the game, <laughs> yeah. you know. Yeah. But it, it, it was almost like they were playing with a five in the back. And this is Mel, uh, Melbourne City. Almost with mm. a five in the back, um, uh, Kyle Jenkinson and Jamison uh, maybe overlapping, you know, to be the, to give you that width. But the last game against, uh, the last game against uh, sorry, Adelaide, it was a 4-3-3. And this one was a 5-4-1 mm. or something. And I'm like, why now do you decide to, to play to play that way, are you trying to get an extra body in somewhere? And to me, it's just like maybe maybe Paddy just played with, you know, tinkered with the lineup or the formation, and it took a bit of adjusting. And they can see it. so you put more players behind the ball, and you can see it within the first two minutes. That was a little bit interesting for me. Instead of having the uh, McLaren up front with with, with Nabu and. Um, and Lecky side by side or the front three, he's pretty had a he, he's he had a more uh, Jamie McLaren up up front by himself, and he had the two in the midfield. So I don't know, I don't know if he officially officially it looks like a four five one. 
like the the one that I'm looking at, the graphic that I'm looking at on Keep Up. Okay. Um, they went with, they went with a four five one, but I get what you're saying, Butch, because Lecky and and Nabu are sitting in the, in the midfield rather than you know up front as left and right wing. Um, yeah. But but to both of your points, I think you know not just the formation, but Roston Griffiths. He's the one that changed the game, I reckon, against Adelaide. Because yeah. when he came on, he, he came on, him and Tilly at the same time, he changed the game, he bossed that midfield. Mm. And to Lockie's point, he he wasn't doing a bad job in the final. <laughs> to take him out, I would have t- taken out uh, Berenguer. I would have taken him out instead, left left um, Ross and Griffiths in there, um, and maybe shifted around, or do what they did in the semi-final, take off Andrew Nabu, throw on Tilio, and just... That's exactly just what I was about to say. Le- yeah, switch Lecky and Tilio maybe. I don't know, like switch sides. But yeah. I mean, all ifs, end or buts. But they just didn't, uh, I don't know, that they, you know, Western United were just too composed. A lot of panic from uh, Melbourne City who didn't who didn't quite get the, get the memo from Pep from, the, from his last game um, to come back from 2-0 down. It was, it, was a, it was a pretty tough one. And um, you know what? Like, yeah, Western United, one one shot on goal, like you said, mm. Borch, and they get and they get a two 0 win. Um, who who uh, just throwing her out for uh, some opinions here? Who who was your man of the match? Oh, man. I, I would have given. I would have. Oh, it was a hard one. I would have gave it to to Priovic. I think they did give it to him, um, just because at, you, you, he got the winner. You know, he got the two goals. Mm. I mean, you've got to be clinical in them situations. Uh, Melbourne City weren't. Um, but then again, Risden again, even even with him being injured, mm. still put in that performance. But if you, yeah, it's it's kind of, look, they're always going to give the man of the match to the winning team, right? And let's be honest, I think Melbourne City were probably the better team. Or sorry, the winning team, sorry. They, they always give the man of the match to the winning team, even though Melbourne City were probably the better team. So it's hard. It's hard to really pick from that Western United team, but because Prejovic got the goals, he, I would say you just have to give it to him. But there's a lot of outstanding performances as well. I mean, Jamie Young is another one there we've got to mention. He's been fantastic all season, and he's he's shown up here again. His presence, his presence in in, in goals. But yeah, I'll give it to Prejovic personally for me. Mm. Yeah, and, and and like for me, I mean, you just look at the clean sheet that that Weston kept, and yeah. for me, Tomoki and my and Lila Kwa, I think I put our tweet out like after the game that <sighs> Tomoki and my Lila Kwa, the best centre back partnership in the league, I think by far. Um, that they, they were just flawless in this game, and 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 when I think back to that second half, there were never really any sort of periods of play for me, at least, that City were like absolutely like you know you know Jamie Young was making save after save after save. There were many moments where City's like the crosses were just going out of play, were overhit. And 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 but at the same time, you know, West United. I guess it's credit to West United because they get they just kept their shape so well. At the same time, yeah. too, they didn't allow City to get into those good positions in behind the back four where they could, you know, tap in a goal for Jamie McLaren. Uh, so so for me, it goes to someone like Tamaki Imai or or Leo Lacroix, who were just, you know, they, they probably don't get grab the, st- the spotlights that maybe Previc does, but yeah. uh, were just absolutely massive in defence. Yeah, and, and look, to, you know, I think to your point, uh, Lockie, around the, the delivery for Melbourne City, you know, Lecky guilty a number of times, mm. um, you know, his, <laughs> his choices in, in crosses. Um, I, I personally think, you know, even as a, as a right back, Josh Risden and his delivery into the box was, was quite good, and especially when you've got a guy like a man like Prijevic, um, you have to give him some service. Yeah, some were off the mark, but I think... I don't know. For me, it's it's kind of a tough one. You could probably give it to anybody in in Western United. Mm. Um, I'm going to go a little bit of a different tact in terms of maybe Josh Risden as captain. Um, you know, getting injured, playing on, and not just playing on, but but marking one of the most dangerous attackers in the league, um, doing his part in attack and in in defence. Um, really, you, you couldn't be guilty of picking anybody from Western United. You couldn't say they couldn't be man of the match. And to Borges' point a lot earlier, they, they probably play a lot more collective as a team. And now that I look at, I'm looking at their actual starting eleven. I'm like, geez, man, how did that? How did they put this side together? Like, mm. really, you know, John Aloisi and his team have to be credited in terms of recruitment. Um, you're looking at guys like Lustica and Kilkenny who've who've been there, done that. Um, obviously, Josh Risden, Jamie Young, um, 
you know, Prijevic was a big signing. Wenzel Hall, like you name, you name that starting eleven, yeah. and you're like, that is a strong starting eleven. That is, you know, it's almost, it's almost know. like, um, it's almost like when the Wanderers came in their first season, and it's kind of everyone else's rejects in a way put yep. together. Still quality players, but you know, you put them, you put them together. You got all right. Everyone kind of criticised that Aloisi at the start of the season. But he's got his his philosophies. He's put them in place, and you know, pretty much a lot a lot of the all right, Winston Hawes. I'm, I'm I'm pretty sure Brisbane didn't want to get rid of him, but it's he's another player that comes in. You put all these players together with quality, and when they start working as a team, this, this is the result you get. And we have got to give mm. credit to to Aloisi as well. I mean, everyone kind of pundits, fans, their own. I think it was the, even Western United fans kind of rid him off. When he when he came in, when he when he signed for the club, but the way he he put that team together, or just missing out on the minor premiership by a couple of points as well, you know, if you look at some of the results where they did drop points, you know, they'll be looking back and said, oh, if we if we just got the result here, we're minor premiers and we're grand finalists as well. So, big big credit to to Aloisi as well, and you know, he's having a sniff around the Australian job. I'm hearing this morning, you know, he's he's putting his hand up or he's putting his name in the hat. You know, so you never know. You never know. <laughs> yeah, look, I, yeah. I, I would, I wouldn't want to go for the Australian job right now. <laughs> but honest. hey, but boys, <laughs> but boys, after the game, right? There was a lot of criticism, and of course, there would be about the whole grand final thing, right? We we hear it every majority of the time. We hear it every year about the minor premiers. Once the minor premiership is done, that's it. It should be the, the Melbourne City should should win it. What do you guys think on that? The whole grand final thing, because I, to be honest, we, when we spoke about it last week, I love the grand final, the whole grand final series. I just think it could be tweaked a little bit, where whoever gets minor premiership is a direct, is straight into the grand final, and then the rest can pl- do their playoffs. Maybe that should be the benefit for you winning the league, but I don't mind it. I don't yeah. mind because now, oh yeah, Melbourne, Melbourne City won the minor premiers, but they didn't win the league. You know, it should be like the rest you, of the you world. Can, you can mix and match it as, as however you want, right, Butch? You could mix and match it like you can make this league a little bit more exciting and go, okay, it's a top five. Um, one goes straight to the final. Yeah. 4v5 play each other, winner plays third. Third versus whoever play each other, play second. And so, so like, obviously, if you finish fifth, you've got to play three games to get to the final and, and so on and so forth. You know what I mean? To, to not – well, look – in, in, in all honesty, we shouldn't criticize the A-League because it's worked pretty well. I think this is the – I could be wrong, but it is the first time a team outside the top two has actually won the A-League when they finished first and second. I think this is the first time. I think, I think, Vic, I think Victory did when they beat Newcastle in 2018. I think Possibly, Victory came yeah, yeah, third. I think maybe you're right. But yeah. but generally, it's it's that 1-2, one, 1-2, two, one, two, or they always make the final. Yeah. Um, mm. But, yeah, you're right. Like I think the two-legged semis was exciting. I think I think that was exciting. So maybe they could have done it for the for the previous leg. But you can you can chop and change it. But to to your original question, Borch, yeah, you gotta love a grand final, man. It's just that one day where you get to it's it's Aussie culture. We spoke about it. Um, you know, an NRL grand final, AFL grand final. You, you've got to have it. You've mm. you know, whilst I, I do admire the whole hey, if you play everybody and you finish first. Your, the your, champion, your yeah. Champion. But then that's why you get um, the benefits. You get the benefits of your first. You make the you qualify for the Champions League, and I think that should also give a grand final guaranteed grand final spot as well. Maybe that's something they should look into as well. Because mm. imagine, imagine Adelaide beat City, then you question it again. Like the team that won the league is not even in the final yeah. now. You know what I mean? So I don't know. Right? What do you what do you reckon, Lucky? Because yeah. I enjoy a grand final um, day. Yeah, I'm 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 a fan of finals. I always have been. I totally understand the argument uh, uh, for it for the for the you know the premiers being the overall winners. But I I think you know you you just look at the benefits that the finals bring. I mean, like viewership numbers go up. I know the viewership numbers for the grand final weren't that great um, by Alex standards, but um, no, neither was the attendance, to be honest. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, I mean, they're the highest attended games usually. Um, you know, the most viewed games. It's it's a big and, and and the Australian sporting culture that we're used to final series. You know, mm. if you tell if you tell your mates who are in, into the AFL or NRL, it's like oh, you know A League finals. Like you know they might actually tune in for once. You know, yeah. um, so it's super important. And and I think while the league is still in a fairly, you know, it's, we're still Youngish, growing. It's yeah. still 
fairly young, right? While we're still at that stage, we can't we, we, we can't get rid of finals. I think I think we'd be shooting ourselves in the foot as a league to be getting rid of finals because we're getting rid of these massive games. And like, you know, and, and then and then I, th- I think I saw a comment saying, oh, you know, we could do a thing like in the Premier League where, where you know, all the games are played at the same time on a final day. And it's like, would that, would, would, a, would Australian sporting fans get, you know, still get behind that as much as like a grand final? I'm not sure. Maybe it would work. Maybe I'm wrong. I think but, I think we have to do that, but with the final series. Anyway, I still yeah. think the last round has to be played together, but still have the final series, lucky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, like, I, I'd and, agree with that. That'd be cool. Yeah, you you can chop and change however you like. The one thing, obviously, now because Postecoglou is over in um, over in Scotland, the one thing I did like about their uh, their end to the season <laughs> was they 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 chopped the top six and bottom six, mm. and then the top six, the last five games of the season have to play each other. To, to finish off the actual, the, because there's 12 teams, so that's 33 rounds. They want to get to 38 rounds. So the top six then play each other once, which is the extra five games, and then you've got a Premiers. So, um, I mean, the only, the only problem with, um, I guess, the Aussie competition is that really outside the Australia Cup, the old FFA Cup, or the old FFA Cup and the league, there's not much really that the clubs are paying for, playing for. Whereas in England, Scotland, they've got their FA Cup, Carabao Cups, your 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 league, and plus whatever European league you might be playing in, because there's like 55 European leagues now. <laughs> um, but but yeah, you could chop and change it however you see fit. But I think uh, the the general consensus with us is, you know, we need a grand final until maybe our league gets bigger and there's promotion and relegation, mm, right? Yeah, that's right. Um, because you'd love to see, imagine a, a you know, let's say an A League Two, and the Nottingham Forest um, situation where they come third in the second league, and then they've got a like that's exciting, yeah, to fight mm. for promotion that kind of thing. But um, I mean, you know, maybe Rob, they can make a make a, a, a Asian Cup or Asian Champions League conference. You know what I mean? And more teams, more of the Australian teams can. Uh, I know now they even took took a position away, right? They took a spot away. So maybe you make like an Asia Cup conference and you get some of the yep. lower teams or mid-table teams, you throw them in there. That could be another good idea to get them playing more international games, if you want to say. Um, yeah, look, promotion, relegation sounds good unless, you know, if you have the teams, it sounds good. But I think there should be a second league. You make a second league, first two, first two three teams in there, Wollongong Wolves, Canberra United, maybe a Tasmania team, team from Darwin, that's four. And then two from the two from the uh, prim, uh, the A League now drop into there, so you make it a ten team, and then we find another you know four more teams somewhere else. And promotion relegation, I reckon that's the way to go, in my opinion. Mm. Yeah, there's 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 a lot that can happen. I think your your point earlier was that the the, the league is still young. So if you think back, there was just the A League, then there was the adoption of the FA Cup. Now there's the adoption of hey. You don't all get to play the FA Cup. Eight to twelve have to qualify um, because you know eight plays. I think eight plays twelve and nine plays. Oh no, nine to twelve. So nine plays twelve, ten plays eleven, and then you qualify. So so they're making it a little bit, a little bit more interesting mm. every couple of they years. They could also do, um, Kev. They could also do something like the winner of the either the minor premiers or the winners of the grand final play whoever wins the 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 Australian Cup. So that's. Maybe that's like a the first game. Yeah, like a the community seat. shield. That's right. Uh, something yeah. like, like a community shield, do yeah. something like that. Mm. Yeah, it's yeah. a glorified friendly, but at least there's you know, the grand final. Uh, there's it, another it trophy. All yeah, they all, all mean yeah. something, especially when there's only one trophy on offer in terms of the Australian Cup and, and obviously the grand final, but you get you get a game like that happening. You see it, you even see it in the NRL, for example, they always have that like an Anzac shield. Where, yes, it's only the same the two teams that are playing in it but there's there's nothing wrong with that do you know what i mean there's always the like a, a it cup. comes down to the promotion of the game right that's yeah that's, that's right that's exactly right yeah about. yeah we want more games we want more crowd attendance we want something to play for because sometimes it gets down to like a dead rubber and there's absolutely nothing to play for but um all in all i think i think there's a lot of opportunity there the a league now needs to have a look at that and go how do we how do we make our sport a little bit more attractive um we'll leave the conversation for another day in regards to how the promotion of the league we might do a separate episode on that with with a whole bunch of the boys in in a bit of a group chat situation 
Um, but I just wanted to touch on one last thing before we wrap up the the show. Um, Western United champions. Uh, what happens now for Western United? Mm, yeah, it's, it's funny. I was thinking about this earlier, and I'm like really excited for next season and 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 to to see what Western United do. And if they can continue, if this can be like the start of something special for Western United. And this is sort of the first time since maybe like Adelaide United that there's been an A-League champion that isn't necessarily one of the big clubs, if you like. Like it's not mm. Melbourne City. It's not Sydney FC. It's not Melbourne Victory. It's, it's Western United. Club. Yeah. 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 Like it, it is. I mean, this club's like three years old. I mean, Wanderers came close um, in their early, in those first couple of years. But, um, but I'm really interested to see, like now all eyes are on Melbourne Victory, Melbourne City. You know, I mean, if you want to include the likes of Sydney FC in there as well, like sort of the big name clubs to, to be like, okay, this little club who are three years old have just gone and won the championship. What are you guys going to do? You know, Western United knocked out Victory and City, the, the sort of two Victorian bigger brothers, if you like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. in the A-League finals. There's now, I'm, I'm now more so curious to see what are those other teams going to do because, uh, yeah, and I think it's going to set up for a really exciting season next year, hopefully. Yeah, I was just going to say, from a Western United standpoint, um, and going back to the crowd, 22,000 in a 30,000 capacity seat stadium, two Melbourne teams, pretty disappointing that they didn't sell it out. But hopefully, hopefully with this win, um, those who are sort of on the on the on the cusp of becoming a Western United fan or mm. the or, fence you know, sitters, after, yeah, the fence sitters commit um, and they get behind it. They're building their new stadium. Um, they've won a grand final now. They've built a really solid team. You'd love to see crowd numbers increase. You'd love to see memberships increase. Yeah. I'm, I'm hoping that's that's the positive that every other club looks at and goes, for the A-League, we needed them to win. We needed them to win a title for the A-League um, because from a Wellington perspective, they're across the ditch and there's only one, one New Zealand team, so you've probably got that that market. But being saturated in a Melbourne market um, with two long established teams and now City with like being the money team, um, you know, what Western, what identity does Western United have now that they've got a championship under their belt? Do they pick up fans? Do they build on that membership? Um, they've got to really take advantage of this period of time yeah. um, because, you know, if, if it doesn't work, then what, what else do they have to do to get fans if, if not win a grand final in their third year? Mm. Yeah, no, that, that's that's right. I mean, look, I understand the crowd attendance. A team that's been in the league for, like you said, three years. Do we expect, much? especially like you said, Kev, they got Melbourne Victory and City as well in Melbourne, so it's, it's going to be a hard. It's it's very similar to a Macarthur situation where if they make a grand final, I mean, the only way you'll get a packed stadium is us neutrals that will go that will go to to the final. Because it's a day out, and I think that's what mm. people from Melbourne should have done. I know, I know. I, Sport, I get... Sporting capital of Australia, and and I'm very disappointed that they couldn't fill thirty thousand. I would, uh, if if I was them, you give you give the 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 rest of the tickets out. You give them out for free. Fill, let them fill the stadium. Yeah. At least it looks good on the camera, right? And then you might from that, you might you might get a few people to sign up from, or maybe not even sign up for membership, but at least attend. Uh, the games next give, season. Give free tickets yeah. to the local juniors, Porch. Give exactly right. To the local but that's juniors. what I mean. There's a way. There's a way, yeah. there's a way to to fix that, like yeah. to sort that out. Because you, how many games where you know, when the Socceroos play and Matildas play, and they know they're not going to fill the stadium. We're talking Parramatta Stadium where they give away free tickets. Like my wife's a nurse. They gave to all the all the nursing departments for the for what everything they did for COVID. A family pass. And that got people to, to the grounds as well. So there's ways there, there's ways that like they, they could have done. To, it can be done. It can, it can be, be done. done. It Especially can be done. with promotion. With promotion, I think. Yeah. Um, and again, we're, we're not going to harp on it, but like the whole coverage of, of the league itself wasn't that great um, in terms of promotion. But if, if you can promote, um, and, and I know they're totally different, but the, but the Matildas can sell out a game and credit to them because they're, they, they're actually a, a really – they're a world force now in football um, and they've got pro arguably one of the world's best players um, in their team. So everybody wants to go watch Sam Kerr and co. Um, but for this to be the grand final, the pinnacle of our sport domestically at a club level and you can't fill 30,000, 
that's where I'm sort of pushing on Western United. Now that you've won a grand final, you have to go and fix this problem. Yeah, You have to go out and promote. You should have given tickets away to grassroots football um, children. Even if they're a city or a, or a victory fan, get them there. Make a day of it. Get them, And you never know, to the neutrals, to the kids that are neutrals, they might like the whole green and black thing. Get them on board. Mm. Buy them a scarf. Buy them a hat. Next year, they want to go watch some games. Yeah, not even that. Them. You got you got a lot of the kids now that, you know, obviously Manchester City is a dominant force in the Premier League and in Europe. They're going to be like, oh, this is Manchester City, Melbourne City. It's owned by the same people. The badge almost exactly the same. The colours are exactly the same. They might jump on board there. But you got to get them to the games. That's that's the thing. You just got to get these kids to the yeah. games. Mm. Well, boys, what, what we'll do now is um, maybe just get your final thoughts on, on this season. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll go into a wrap-up. Um, sorry to put you on the spot, Lockie, but we'll go with you first. Yes. No, of course. Of course. Um, look, overall, really enjoyed the season personally. It's just like a fan of a club, but also a, as a neutral, there were plenty of games that I enjoyed um, and, and plenty of exciting storylines. And I think next season has been set up like very – it almost – Every club has like a storyline, you know, in terms of how do they approach next season? So like Perth Glory, will they bounce back? The likes of Wanderers, Sydney. I mean, like some of the big Sydney, the, the, the three Sydney clubs, MacArthur, Wanderers, Sydney, all missing finals. How do they bounce back next year? Um, but look, you know, I, I'm just looking forward to, fingers crossed, um, a, a COVID-free season, a, a pandemic-free season. That would be awesome. You know, Wellington playing back home regularly, uh, Perth playing back home regularly. Uh, it's uh, I'm excited to see how that goes and and hopefully attendances to to continue to rise. Hopefully, I'm I'm optimistic about the future. So it's been a lot of fun and and I'm like already looking forward to next season. Honestly, Butch. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, I think I think it started off well. The the A League season, you know, new broadcasters. Yeah, we could say there was a few issues there. It is only their first year, so they get this year uh, as a, as a bit of a pass leeway. Um, but yeah, look, it was it was an exciting, exciting season. We spoke about the people that have criticised the quality. They need to start watching some of these games because some of the goals that have been scored this season have been incredible. I mean, we had a few scorpion kicks and all that sort of stuff this season, long ranges, you know, goals from all over the park. And like you said, we like you look at that Melbourne Melbourne City front three and they, they're all Socceroo players. Do you know what I mean? You've got international players playing um, in the competition, uh, and, and yeah, very similar to what you touched on there, uh, Lucky, with the with the storylines of each team, and it, it does feel like that in a way too. You know, what I mean, everyone's got their own little chapter. Um, you know, my team, Perth Glory, wasn't you know, probably the worst worst footballing season that they've ever had as as a club. Wooden Spooners got the got the marquee, who's afraid to fly for hours, and um, obviously the travel the travel between covert and the fixture list and all that sort of stuff didn't really help but um yeah they're going to look they're going to have a look at do we keep the manager do we get someone else in and and how's the club going to look going forward and then you look at some of the other teams western united what are they going to do now you know what i mean are they going to are they going to get uh some players in and if you look at some players around the league as well they're going to be looking at you know what well, actually this Aloisi project looks decent Let's go, like, and when if, if they do if they do get approached, they're like, let's go. I'm down with this project. Uh, I'm down with the the philosophies of Aloisi. And then you get a stronger. You get three Melbourne teams, and we, if, if if victory win it next season, there's three different Melbourne teams in a row that are going on to win to win the grand final. And it's not far off that victory. You know, could they could actually win it next season with the team they have? Um, but all in all, I think it, it definitely has been an exciting season. Yeah, of course, there's stuff that the league can tweak. Maybe don't put the derbies on the first weekend. That could be one. But um, other than that, I think the crowds definitely should improve next season. Um, and yeah, and yeah, I, I say all the all them content creators, like yourself, Lucky, keep doing what you're doing because uh, you're promoting the game, you know, to the best of your ability. And uh, like we've said it so many times, uh, you've done a <laughs> exceeded expectation, I think, and you've done a great job. And Kev, uh, well done on your first. First year of covering the A League on this channel, and hopefully uh, a few more, a lot more years to come. Let's see what let's see what we can do with this. Absolutely. Thanks, Butch. But um, but yeah, and just shout out again to Lockie, mate. You've you've 
Um, you've owned the A-League content this year on social <laughs> media, mate. I, um, I've i got to say, very knowledgeable, um, well-deserved, you know, taking on the Central Coast Mariners, um, social media channels on game days. Uh, mate, you've done an amazing job. We always love having you on the show. You, you're a wealth of knowledge of the A-League, um, and we're only going to get better. So um, thanks for joining us. Yeah, uh, yeah. Wait, guys. Thank, thanks so much. I, I just want to say as well, like, it's so good, like, collaborating with other people. I think that's, as a league, you know, as I mentioned earlier, we're still young, we're still growing. It's all about us creators, like, you know, grouping together to make ourselves stronger, I guess. So, yeah, thanks so much. And and as we've thanked Lockie, um, there's obviously a number of other guys that have jumped on the show this year. Uh, Robbie um, from Adelaide from the Red Army. Um, we had Joss uh, from the Sunday Ballers. Um, we had JD, who re runs the social uh, media channels over there at Sydney FC. Always a pleasure. And we had Val uh, stop in from Stoppage Time. Um, again, it's it's always great to collaborate with people, have a chat. And we're, and we're starting to talk to even more um, people that are on these social media channels and, and starting their own content. So we'd love to obviously collaborate. So hopefully that continues. Even in the off season, there's a few things that we're going to have and we're going to bring to you guys. Um, but just my thoughts on the season the Melbourne, the Melbourne juggernaut of the three teams, that was amazing. Um, you know, definitely showed the Sydney teams how it's done. Uh, Western Sydney Wanderers getting rid of their CEO. Um, that, that was probably a <laughs> highlight from, from my perspective. Um, we, we've, we've upset another CEO in one of the Sydney teams and, and we're hopefully going to bring some content um, around that. Uh, but there's a lot of, obviously, having the coverage um, – you know, through Paramount, there's a lot of opportunities for them to fix it. So that, that'll be good. Lastly, congratulations to Melbourne City for, uh, premier, for the premiership and congratulations to Western United as champions. Um, it's been a great season. Um, season one from the football capital in regards to A-League. Looking forward to season two. Um, but Lockie, Borch, thanks again for joining me. And um, no we're going to have to see you on the next one. Take it easy.